It's good to be with you on this Thursday, and I trust you are encouraged in the Lord. He is the encourager. The Holy Spirit is the comforter, the one called alongside, and he will get us back on the ground of faith like we talked about a few days ago, and uh, we can count on him meeting our need. Now, I want to look at our lives from a little different angle. We are living in the midst of a trial. We have some needs that are beginning to develop in our lives, in our relationships, financially. Who knows what may have come up, or we may be burdened for our community, for our country, or whatever it is. And it's a great time for us to have our faith strengthened. I love the, the story of the man uh, which was taken with the palsy. You know the story how the house where the Lord was was filled with people and a lot of the religious leaders were there. And because they couldn't get in, the men that were helping him let him down through the roof. That was quite a dramatic uh, moment. And, uh, and so when he came down and was set before Jesus, uh, we read in verse 20, and when he, Jesus, saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Here in Luke chapter 5, uh, we have this wonderful account of the Lord addressing immediately the spiritual need of this man. Now, the Lord loved to heal because he loves us. He loved to meet the needs of the people. He had compassion even when they were hungry. But I think it's very instructive here that he dealt with the spiritual need of the man first. Healing a man who is lost and never having come, him come to know him or the Lord Jesus as his Savior would be futile. All would be happening is the body would be healed temporarily to be lost eternally. And so the Lord goes right to the very core, which is what he is burdened about for us right now. He's wanting to heal us spiritually. He wants the needs in your life and my life to be dealt with as we've had a change in our world perspective, as the normal life has been shaken to the core, as we are not able to do a lot of the things that we like to do, and maybe even our coping mechanisms. We're having to face our relationships, and we're having to face different aspects of life from a totally different uh, paradigm. And that's good. God's wanting us to get first things first. He's wanting to deal with us spiritually. And, but what's interesting in this passage, he then says to these religious leaders, because in their minds they're saying, this is blasphemy, how can a man forgive sins? And of course, he knew their hearts in verse 22 of chapter 5 of Luke. But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, what reason ye in your hearts? Whether it's easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, rise up and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. And he went ahead and said, Arise and walk, so that they would see that. Now, here's what I want you to get. Trials bring needs that God wants to miraculously meet. If it wasn't for trials, we wouldn't see miracles in our lives because we wouldn't need miracles. And you may be in a unique situation. Maybe you're not getting the medical help you need right now because things are shut down. Maybe you are hurting economically. Maybe you're thrown by certain situations that are happening and, and not able to accomplish the plans that you want to accomplish. And you need God to intervene. Well, as hard as those things are, we need to count it all joy when these trials come because God wants to do miracles. But here's how I want to put this together for you today. God wants to do a miracle so that you know he's got the power to change you spiritually. You see, God did the miracle with the man with the palsy so everyone there would know he has the power to forgive sin. He has the power to transform spiritually. Our faith constantly needs to be encouraged. 
it's so easy for us to look at things just from a human perspective and from a very limited perspective. But we get into a hard situation and we cry out to the Lord and God's working in our heart and then God steps in and does a miracle. Well, that's not just to meet our need, folks. That's to reinforce the fact you can believe him. Oh, we're looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 11 in our Bible studies. Don't miss those times. And in those Bible studies, you're finding out that God is a great God and will hear the prayer of men and women that call out to him. Faith does make a difference. We live in a genuine, vibrant interaction with a mighty God because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. If we're saved, my, what a privilege to live a life of miracles. So as you're facing a need, like this man with the palsy, instead of being frustrated about it, realize, ah, oh, here's an opportunity for me to have my faith substantiated by a miracle occurring. God has promised to give you your daily bread. He has promised to meet your needs. He has promised to answer prayer. And so let's expect God to do some unusual things because he's wanting to change our lives in these days. And I think we can count on him to show himself strong in the human realm so that we know he can transform us in the spiritual realm.